Let me just find the title again. Dealing with anger, resentment, and pessimism through the lens of non-duality. Woohoo! That's a title, isn't it? That is a title. Okay. Let's try that. So a lot of people wonder what I'm doing with these silences. Some people get it and some people wonder. And basically, I'm waiting for the words to come. I'm trying to allow them to just appear immediately from the unknown, rather than for me to have constructed a character, an idea, and to be seeking through time and be speaking through a once removed um, person. <laughs> like, so I'm trying to re really let speaking happen from presence rather than speaking happen from an identity that I want to portray. And the reason that you'd want to portray, portray an identity is to seek and get something. Sometimes Portraying an identity can be a practical thing that's not seeking. So, um, yeah, but most of the time it's the identity is not needed and there can just be a speaking from this vast spaciousness. And the benefit of doing that is it's deeply relaxing. You're totally connected to who you are and you're kind of telling the truth, as Papaji would say, and Gangaji, tell the truth, you're telling the truth. You know, you're not in some sort of illusion to try and get something. And it's love as well. That unknown is love. It's speaking from the unknown, which people are kind of going in and out of, but they don't really realize it. But when the attention is like really not focused on the character, then it can be felt that direct expression from love. And that's like really loving someone. So, you know, in a conversation, really loving someone isn't feeling all the silences, isn't trying to make them feel comfortable. Really loving someone is being yourself, which is telling the truth. It's not always appropriate. Like through the many years I've been into this subject, I've tried it in social situations that aren't into spirituality. And it sometimes can cause you problems because people think you're cuckoo. That's also okay. I am cuckoo. Cuckoo, if you haven't realized. Cuckoo. I just uh, got lost in so much joy then not watching my partner downstairs. So the mirror, the windows can do this mirroring effect where I can see what happens down in the garden. It was just such joy to see him. He doesn't know I was seeing him though. I can't see him very strongly. It's just an outline.
yeah, so dealing with um, anger, resentment, and pes pessimism, pessimism through the lens of non-duality. So when you're really devoted, I'm sorry, for all of those that are trying to fall asleep. So when you're really devoted to who you are, which is God, you could say, I mean, if we put it in more standard language, you could say when you're really devoted to God, so when you're really devoted to this moment, it's love. And anger can rise, and all of those feelings can arise, but maybe not with such um, intensity, and they don't come from hatred or self-hating. Um, just like a spontaneous expression that's appearing. And sometimes they're appropriate. What were the feelings again? Oh my goodness, my memory. Res res with anger, resistance, and pe pes pessimism. So resistance, I suppose, would be seeking. So maybe that's um, something that doesn't come. But the pessimism and maybe the anger, like all emotions can come. It's not an exclusion of emotions. What it is, is a dropping of seeking. So there has to be a determination whether these feelings are from a craving, from aversion, from resistance to what is, or whether they're simply an expression from what is. And it does feel different when they are coming from what is, from you telling the truth, then they come from love and emptiness. And when they're coming from a person, they come from a contraction, an energetic contraction that doesn't feel quite at home here and is in resistance to what's happening. And just the knowing of that, the seeing of that, helps the brain to determine and understand that freedom, what you truly seek, isn't found in the flow of things. It's found in whether or not you're contracted and identified, or whether you're telling the truth, I'm doing the telling the truth thing here, whether you're being yourself as stillness and love. So that's the, um, the difference. And that really helps the brain and recalibrate the brain in understanding that whatever the mind is blaming, you know, often anger's blame, self-blame or external blame, or resisting or being very pessimistic about, if it's from a seeking perspective, then it's trying to change events, not through a natural urge, but through a seeking urge. And it believes, not consciously, but unconsciously, that I will find freedom when I change these events. So these events become incredibly important. And then this creates the maintenance of this contracted identity of trying to control life for you rather than letting life happen and giving life to God, to divine, to this moment. There's not a surrender, there's not a um, uh, this openness for life speaking through you. There's a person that has an idea about its life and what it should be. But the body will have natural ways, like this gets missed out sometimes in spirituality, so it gets confused. 
but it's not that like you have the awakening and then suddenly you just are happy to do what everybody else says the body might have hunger might not want to do something but it's from a different place it's not from a contraction that's seeking in time when you're seeking in time it then has the possibility of going to hatred some teachers might even say all seeking is hatred i think roger said that or maybe i've said that in a way like in their expression of them they're not hatred but in the exacerbation of them they can turn into hatred so if they they keep not getting the seeking met life keeps give sending them to bananas rather than unicorns farting rainbows then um then uh then he can you know turn into um hatred and blame self blame shame like all these things that are about you and this is unbearable for the person it creates this agitation this and this terror forms or this fear forms of not being anything because it's propelled into must be something must end this hatred through myself through doing and it fears to surrendering into the moment because it most probably fears perpetual hatred perpetual terror you know perpetual death or something you know fears not being able to seek so if you imagine death i said this so many times you know we die every night when we go to sleep but we don't have an issue with it because we believe we'll wake up the next day and what's important to us in waking up the next day is the continuation of seeking which is the maintenance of the story of ourself so it's not that we fear death as such we fear not being able to continue seeking this is terrifying to us and it's terrifying to us ironically because we're looking for home in the flow of things so we're looking for that emptiness of death in the flow of things in seeking and achieving and getting where it's actually right here in every instant and this is what's so great about understanding the difference between seeking and not seeking and speaking from emptiness rather than speaking from a person because the more you see that the more the brain breaks its attachments and as it breaks its attachments another possibility comes through when i used to live in the forest with roger castillo my teacher um at first you know i can blame my problems on him on the birds on the trees on the place on the neighbors but then after some time you know because it was so remote you know you could obviously see the repetition of the patterns of the mind and the repetition of the seeking and there were many times when that seeking fell away and then when it came back and watching that difference so having exactly the same scenario where there was no suffering as opposed to the same scenario when i really thought it was because of roger or because of some other thing it really broke the mind the mind assumptions really seeing that okay same events but me i'm either surrendering to life like giving to life or i'm fighting it and when i'm fighting it i believe that it's actually life fighting me like life is giving me lemons and bananas rather than toffee cake
So, so the ven lens of anger, resistance, and pessimism, pe pessimism through the lens of non-duality is, um, is the anger and the pessimism could just be appearing from nothing. Resistance will be seeking. The lens is, is, is there seeking or is the, the giving everything to God, the emptiness that nobody's experiencing, nobody's having an experience. There is simply experiencing from love. And love is to truly love its absolute emptiness. Nothing appearing as everything or no longer being the person, but the empty looker and the I am. Whichever way we call it. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I'm so excited to share this. I am so excited to share this with you. And what is this? Not words. Not what I say. It's the silence in which it's being shared with. Like this is what satsang is. Meeting in truth. Who are we? Not somebody. We are this expansion. I am, you are, this is. That's all this talk is. It's not about you understanding me. It's not about minds. It's not about doing. It's meeting as this. I am, you are, for nothing, for no reason. That can be so scary to the mind. I must have a reason. I must be something. You don't have to be something. It doesn't benefit you being something, but the mind is programmed to be something. Because if it's not, then we're empty. There's no purpose. There's no point. There's no specialness. There's no two-ness, there's no other. There's only what is.
There's only what is. So if you lift your arm, who is lifting the arm? Who is twirling the fingers? Who is growing the nails? I think part of the problem for a lot of people is because they're identified with shame, I think, a lot in the time in our society. There is a fear of not being special. So to counteract shame, often there is a focus on specialness. And in the specialness, you know, you'll, you'll finally be loved, you'll finally be worthy, you'll finally be good enough, you'll finally not be alone. And um, that's not a conscious thing. It feels so real when it's presenting. It's not true. You don't have to be something. To anybody. In a way, by doing that, you know, you're buying into their illusion. You're supporting their illusion, which is sometimes appropriate. Sometimes we have to do that. Like with myself, I find that I have to do that sometimes in certain situations. Sometimes it can come from old seeking patterns in me. And sometimes it can be what I discern as compassion for the other person, but it isn't really compassion because real compassion is to tell the truth. It's kind of like a society's expected compassion in a way. Okay, so if you've got any questions, it doesn't.